Uh, good morning. So today is January 4th. Yeah, uh, January 4th. I'm heading to my consultation with Dr. Tanasak at the HF Athletic Hospital. Just waiting for the nurse. She's gonna come and I don't know. <laughs> Put me to sleep, I think, and then yeah. <sighs> you don't have a double chin. Okay, good. You're good. Feels like it. Did you bring the Oreos? Yes. I got the Oreos for you. I snuck them in. Hey guys! Welcome back to another video. Oh my gosh, I'm excited. Today, we are finally talking about my boobies, my titties, melons. <laughs> we're getting into it. So, we're going in depth on my breast augmentation that I got in January of 2018, so two and a half years ago now. Yeah, it's been a while. I actually vlogged, I'm not a vlogger, so I didn't do a good job, but I vlogged actually the entire experience, so if you do want to go way back on my channel and look at some great iPhone footage, then be my guest, it's there. There'll probably be more information in those videos because I think I made like three or four videos um, before and after my augmentation. So before I really get into the augmentation, I'll let you know what's on the menu. So today I have an assortment of cheesecake. So this is three cheesecakes. One is a cookie crumble, the middle is a caramel drizzle, and then I put Oreo crumbs on this third one. And then this, a cheese flavored noodle that I found at the store at the Asian grocery store. Um, I have the package, there it is. Cheese, so cheese hot chicken flavor. I'm a little confused about these because there was like a hot flavor package and then also cheese packets. I don't like soupy noodles, I like just noodles, so I didn't add liquid. And so when I added one flavor packet of the hot sauce, it's so hot. Like I, there's no way I could add two. I think this is definitely spicier than the hot noodle or then the spicy noodle challenge if you did watch that video so pray for me <laughs> and then i put both cheese packets in so we'll see if it actually tastes cheesy i don't know but that is what we're digging into today so sit back relax grab something to drink grab yourself a snack and let's get into my breast augmentation story where to start. Oh, that's hot. Don't taste any cheese. <laughs> it's good though. I like noodles. I haven't had noodles in a while. Um, so basically, when I was in my undergrad, I was actually looking into getting a breast augmentation. I've wanted one my entire life. My boobs, before I got them done, my whole life, they were just, not only were they small, but they were quite saggy. Also, I'm gonna put as many photos as I can conjure up to show you guys like the before and after and whatever else I'm gonna talk about. I'll try to get, like, get some good photos for you guys. But yeah, they were small but saggy and I felt like, <laughs> I don't know if any of you girls can relate Maybe this is TMI, but I felt like my areolas, they just took over most of my boob, boobs. So they were just very unattractive to me and they gave me very low self-confidence. I never really like gave off the fact that I didn't like them um, to men, but I've, I was so self-conscious about them and I just, I really hated my boobs. Not because they were small, but because of the shape and how they just appeared. So in my undergrad, I actually went to two of the best plastic surgeons in Toronto and got quotes and uh, got some consultations done. And I'll bring up what I got quoted for those, those guys. 
Mm. <laughs> okay, so the first quote I got was from I don't know if I'm gonna I don't know if I should say the name of the doctors. I'm just gonna leave that out. They recommended two different procedures. The first one was a breast augmentation and a lift. And for this, the total cost was $13,500. And I also got a quote from this doctor for just a breast lift without implants. And that alone was $8,887. <sighs> Boobs are not cheap, not in Toronto. So the first doctor suggested that I get a breast lift based on the slopage of my boobs, but the second doctor did not suggest a breast lift. He just um, suggested breast augmentation implants. So <laughs> these are even more expensive. So the second doctor quoted me two different prices. The first one is if I got saline implants, and this would cost me $12,995. The second quote that he gave me was for silicone implants, and this would cost me, with him, $15,255. So, hmm, I left these doctors, and obviously I wasn't going to get a breast augmentation right away but it was something that at least I knew the price of and it was definitely gonna be in my future. And yeah, then... <laughs> then, maybe one, one and a half, two years after my two consultations, me and my best friend ended up going to Thailand for a month and <laughs> I had done extensive, maybe not extensive, but I had done some research prior to booking this trip about Thai plastic surgery. If you didn't know, Thailand is like a big hub for um, plastic surgery, especially people traveling to Thailand to get surgery. They specialize in sexual transitions and they did have a lot of information suggesting that a lot of people traveling to Thailand for a week, getting a surgery there, and flying back and just having like a little vacation on a beach while you recover from your surgery or something like that. In Thailand, surgery is ridiculously cheap. Ridiculously. So I ended up researching the crap out of a few surgical centers in Bangkok and Phuket. So Bangkok's obviously the capital of Thailand and Phuket is the island on the south. I ended up choosing a doctor and booking the surgery. So the way it worked out, I arrived in Thailand, I traveled for three weeks, and then on the last week I got my surgery in Bangkok, stayed in Bangkok for the rest of the week, and then flew home to Canada. I'm sorry, this video is probably gonna be really long. How I not touch this cheesecake yet. So I ended up going to a place called Asia Cosmetic Hospital. It had one of the best doctors in Bangkok, uh, Dr. Tanansak. <laughs> and surgery in Thailand is not like surgery in Canada. It is in a different language and it is very confusing. And even though in Thailand a lot of people speak English, it is still very difficult. Thank God, I was with my best friend Randy and she was there so that I was not alone during that process because it was a little stressful. <laughs> mm. Yum. I met Dr. Tanansak and tried on some sizes and we basically decided that I would do 350 cc's under the muscle. So that's exactly what I did. 350 cc's under the muscle and I got the, I don't know what this incision is, but the one under the breast fold. Trans auxiliary, I think. And yeah, then the next day we booked myself in for surgery. How crazy is that? I went in for a consultation. The next day I'm getting surgery. It was wild, so wild. So if you didn't guess yet, I'm quite a spontaneous person. Um, yeah. <laughs> 
but this I felt like I had really done a lot of research and I felt confident. I've never been put under anesthetic, so, um... Actually, you know what? Hmm. When I rolled into the, the operating room, yeah, I got like a wave of emotion. Do you cry? Almost. I've cried when they put in my view. I like, I was more crying because I was, I was looking at the tools and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Why did they hide that? <laughs> it was terrifying, but you know, they put the anesthetic in my arm and within, yeah, 10 seconds I was out like a light and woke up with boobs. I can't feel my nipples. Oh, I wanna see. Oh, I wanna see. Do you have, they're warm. <laughs> Can I feel? Yeah. <laughs> No peeking. No, tell they unwrap you. And yeah. So to this day, my breast augmentation in Thailand, though be it spontaneous, risky, whatever you want to call it, was one of the best decisions I've ever made in my life. I do not regret it one ounce ever. I still absolutely love my boobs. I have gained so much confidence after I got them and I would 1000% get them again. That being said, I'm not really sure if getting a breast augmentation is something that will increase your confidence or not, as it has mine. But my personal experience, I would get them again in a heartbeat. Uh, so, what I ended up spending, $4,300, that might be US, I can't remember, but literally a fraction of what they would cost in Canada. My entire trip was less than what they would cost for just my boobs here in Canada. So I'm going to get into the Q&A because there are a lot of questions about recovery and exercise and some different things. These cheesecakes are amazing. So this is the cookie one. This is incredible. Yum. Ooh, messy. So question number one, how did you get over fear of surgery if you had it? I want a boob job, but I'm scared. I think just the way that my personality is, I don't really get scared because I don't really think about it. So I honestly didn't get scared until I was rolled into the operating room. I'm not sure if your fear is like pain related or complications during surgery. Maybe that's one of the fears that you have. And I will say this, when I was going to Thailand, in my head I convinced myself that because these doctors specialize in sexual reassignment surgery. I felt like my boob job was a piece of cake for them. If they could turn a vagina into a penis or vice versa, I'm sure they could just put some implants in my boobs and call it a day. Overall, I do feel like breast augmentation is a very common surgery and I don't think that it's something that gets, like yes, there are risks involved and there could be complications, but in my head, I just convinced myself that those are so few and far between. Okay, pain after surgery. So the pain in my boobs was like a 3 out of 10. The pain in my butt from sleeping, sitting up, was like a 9. I'm standing up because my butt hurts so much. I think my butt hurts worse than my boobs right now. They don't hurt like too, too bad. It's my butt. My butt hurts. In terms of my breast pain, it was so minimal. Um, maybe like a slight discomfort, but I was on so many drugs, so I really didn't feel that uncomfortable. It just felt like a pressure in my chest. Next question. Anything you wish you would have had after surgery you didn't think of before? 
Nope. What made you ultimately decide silicone? I really don't remember. If I find the answer, I will put it here. How long did they take to drop? Yes, that's a good question. So when you get breast augmentation, your boobs actually do sit quite high on your chest because they're inflamed and they need time to actually fall into their normal sitting position. So it feels sometimes like your boobs are just up in your chin for a little while. Uh, and ultimately, like I would see changes every week in the them like slowly falling, but ultimately it probably took like three to four months for them to drop into a nice spot. Next question, did the massage exercises hurt? Not one bit, no. Was it hard to do your hair or move your arms? Uh, yes, yes it was. Uh, putting my arms up did hurt quite a bit, but the thing that hurt the most uh, during my recovery was actually, and this actually hurt for quite a while, I would say maybe like a month after my surgery, every time I would like try to push myself up out of bed, it would hurt. I would feel like pain in my chest. But after a few days, it didn't really hurt to put my arms up. I was able to wash my hair, I think on the third day, all by myself. Next! How much extra do they weigh? So this, I'm not too sure because I didn't really weigh myself right before and right after surgery. And I'm pretty sure I gained like seven to 10 pounds in my month in Thailand just from eating all the Thai food. When did you exercise again? So I began exercising, I think legs, I began doing about three weeks after my surgery and I didn't do upper body until about week five. You pay a lot of money to get these and you don't want to risk doing any sort of upper body movements for lifting heavy things that you are not covered to lift yet. Next, best non-underwire bras post-surgery. How did you, how do you determine the right size to get? In all honesty, I did not wear any underwire bras post-surgery. I basically just wore my sports bras that I currently owned <laughs> and they were quite supportive and they fit well uh, and they were very comfortable. Next, do you think breast implant illness is a real thing? Um, I've never heard of it before until just recently. I've also heard it's textured implant related. So it's tough because breast implant illness wasn't really a thing until like a year ago until a lot of people in the fitness industry started coming out about their breast implants causing all these problems in their body. Now I do you think it's a thing? Just based on the couple scenarios that I have read about people, people that I've, I've followed on Instagram that I know have gotten their implants taken out because of this illness, it seems pretty clear that after they got their breast implants taken out that their symptoms were immediately relieved and they felt like a normal human being again. So I do think it's a real thing. Um, I'm not too sure if it has anything to do with textured implants. I honestly don't really know the cause of it. All I know is I never had any symptoms or anything after getting one, so yeah. Uh, next question, what made you decide to originally get a boot job? Ah, uh, like I think I mentioned this already in the video quite well. It was the shape of my boobs and I just felt extremely lacking in confidence uh, being naked in front of people. Uh, did you have any sickness or nausea after it? No. Nope, I was eating all the Thai food. <laughs> How long after did you start going back to the gym and training again? I already answered that. How visible is the scar tissue at the moment from your breast augmentation and how quickly did the visibility of the scars diminish? I'll put some pictures. Um, I can't remember the exact dates of these pictures, but I will put how many weeks after it was. Honestly, now when I show people my scars, they don't see them. <laughs> like they can't find them. I'll actually show you guys. So if you can see, that is one of my scars from far away. You can barely tell. And that is the other. 
So those are my scars. Please don't demonetize me. <laughs> How long did the double bubble end up taking to fully go away? So in my original videos, I actually ended up with a thing. I didn't know what it was until I had it <laughs> called double bubble. Basically what ended up happening on both boobs, this happened. Um, here, let's say here was the original crease of my original breast fold. They ended up putting the implant like half under the original breast fold. So what happened was originally it created this double bubble effect because the crease was still expanding to fit the size of my implant. So it, you can look back, I don't want to show it because I don't want to get demonetized, but you can look back into one of my previous videos and you, I literally show you my double bubble. It ended up looking basically like my boob and then there was a little crease and then a bubble on the, underneath. So it looked like a double bubble. And at first, I wasn't really freaking out quite yet, but I was kind of freaking out because I thought that my surgeon fucked up. <laughs> but uh, then after researching it, I realized what had happened. He never told me that this was gonna happen. Sometimes never goes away and sometimes it does. I was reading on forums a lot of girls that their double bubbles never went away and that kind of freaked me out. But I didn't want to freak out over something that was potentially fine, which it was. My double bubble did go away and now it is just a normal boob. <laughs> How long did that take? Probably about seven or eight months. It did take quite a while and I know one was better than the other. One was a little bit more drastic, so it did take a bit longer, but uh, probably, yeah, eight months uh, to completely disappear. Uh, is it better to go into surgery having good pectoral muscles or does it matter? Honestly, I really don't think it matters. What was the recovery like for your augmentation? Recovery was a lot easier than I expected it to be. I said already after three days I was able to wash my own hair and like I also said the only thing that persistently hurt was getting up out of bed in the morning and sitting up. But going about my day I didn't really notice that I had foreign objects in my boobs. It felt quite normal. The only time when I kind of noticed them was when I would go running. I would have to wear two sports bras. Uh, the recovery was quite honestly a breeze. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the last question. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little topic. If you guys do have any more questions about my breast augmentation, if you are considering getting one and you want some more advice, let me know down below if I can help you with anything or answer any more questions that you have. And I'll be happy to do that. So yeah, give this video a thumbs up on your way out and thank you guys so so much for watching. I love you all. Thank you so much for being here.